Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and welcome to part three of my series on the history of hurricanes striking Louisiana. So in our previous two episodes, we looked at the 14 hurricanes that struck the state during the latter half of the 19th century, stopping with the disastrous Chenier Caminata hurricane of 1893 that killed over 2,000 people in the United States. So in this episode, we're going to look at the hurricanes that struck the state during the first half of the 20th century. So in a really quick review, throughout the 19th century, the vast majority of hurricanes struck here in southeast Louisiana. But the data is skewed by the fact that the region was heavily settled in the state and there were plenty of historical records available to investigate. So as the southwest corner of the state was settled in the middle of the 19th century, records about storms striking there began to appear in the historical record. So, but you may notice that the central portion of the coastline from Vermilion Bay westward remained oddly absent from hurricane strikes. So that area was settled by the Cajuns and historical records are available, but the quirk of climatology keeps the chances of storms making landfall in that area extremely low. Though if you think that Acadiana manages to dodge the worst effects of hurricanes, you would be wrong, as the 20th century will show. So in 1900, the Galveston hurricane smashed that city, killing about 10,000 people. But while the storm was felt to an extent in Louisiana, the first hurricane to make landfall in the state in the 20th century may, did so in August 1901 as a Category 1, making landfall at Beerus before heading up the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Now, it was a heavy rainmaker as it dropped nearly 8 inches in 24 hours near the landfall. So it took 8 years for the next storm to strike the state, and it was one to remember. So it was named the Grand Isle or Hurricane after this island right here, and it was the first major hurricane to strike the state since Chenier Caminata in 1893, and it made landfall just to the east of there. Sources vary on its strength, so some say it was a borderline Category 4, while others at the National Hurricane Center will say it's a Category 3. But regardless of that, it was strong enough to tore a swathe of destruction throughout the southeastern part of the state. So communications with New Orleans was lost due to downed telegraph lines, and levee breaches along Bayou St. John causes portions of western New Orleans to flood. The seventh occasion in its history. So half of the coal barges along the Mississippi River between Baton Rouge and New Orleans were sunk. Most of the state's sugarcane crop was completely lost just over harvest, and much of Plaquemines Parish was under 15 feet of storm surge. So six years later in 1915, southeast Louisiana was again struck by a major hurricane. This time a 125 mile an hour category three made landfall almost at this exact spot and passed just to the west of New Orleans. So this was the first major hurricane to directly strike New Orleans in nearly 100 years. Nearly every building in the city suffered damage from the winds as well as from the storm surge from Lake Pontchartrain causing levee failures as well as a complete failure of the city's pumping system leading to the city's eighth inundation from a hurricane. So southeast of the city, th that area was overwhelmed by 15 or foot or higher storm surge, causing multiple levee failures and a total loss of communication for weeks with those communities in the region. In 1918, the third major hurricane to strike the state in a decade did so, this time on the opposite side of the state when it made landfall between Cameron and Grand Chenier at the beginning of August. So based on the reports by the National Weather Service, the storm was extremely compact and moving briskly. As according to their estimates, it was moving at 18 miles an hour at landfall and destructive winds from this hurricane only extended about 13 miles from the eye. So having said that, extensive damage was reported throughout the Lake Charles area. In 1920, Louisiana was on the verge of experiencing the Roaring Twenties like the rest of the nation after the Allies' victory in World War I. So it was also the beginning of a decade where the state experienced only three hurricane strikes, though their effects varied greatly. The first hurricane was in September of 1920, where the storm made landfall between Homa and Morgan City as a Category 2 storm. So the U.S. Weather Bureau had, for, had some forewarning of the storm's approach, causing nearly 10,000 people between Galveston and New Orleans to evacuate. The first evacuation of a hurricane in the state's history. In October 23, a minimal Category 1 made landfall with similar impacts. The third storm was in August 1926 and made landfall at nearly the exact same spot as the other two, this time with 110 mile an hour winds. After 1926, there was quite a lull for Louisiana where there were only two storms that struck the state over the next 15 years. The first was in June 1934 when a storm made landfall at Sippermore Point on the western edge of St. Mary Parish. While in August August 1938, a minimal hurricane struck just west of Cameron, setting 24-hour rainfall records across the state. The 1940s were the busiest decade for hurricanes of the 20th century in the North Atlantic, with nearly 50 hurricanes making landfall, and almost 10 of them were major hurricanes. Louisiana somehow managed to dodge almost all of these storms, with only two making direct landfall 
during the decade. However, one storm just missed making landfall in the state. However, it impacted in ways that would be remembered for decades afterward. In August 1940, an extremely slow-moving hurricane crept along the Louisiana coast before making landfall just west of Port Arthur, Texas. So the wind field of this hurricane was extremely compact. But what was remarkable about this storm wasn't the wind or the storm surge, but rather the amount of rainfall and flooding as a result. The southern half of the state was drenched with at least five inches in all locations, but the Acadiana area had rainfall with the storm measuring in feet over the five days. With the statewide rainfall record for a storm and 24-hour period measured south of Abbeville with 23.8 inches falling in one day and 38 inches for the entire event. Nearly two million acres of land were flooded with at least one foot of water, and as the water slowed drained to the southwest, the flooding became worse in the small, tiny community of Gaydon, which was under, at the time, six feet of water as it was. The only thing keeping the town from being entirely washed away by the floodwaters was this earthen dam that I'm standing on right here. So the dam rerouted water away from the town and kept it in the swamps, with the consequence of water upstream taking longer to drain. So community leaders in the city of Crowley, which is drained by the bayou this way, tried to blow the dam up in order to drain Crowley, but the residents of Gaydon kept a 24-hour armed guard to prevent this from happening in order to keep their town from being subsequently, like I said, washed away. The 1940 flood, as it was known, is the reference for the worst case scenario as not even the 2016 Louisiana floods meet the rainfall amount seen with this storm. So there you go. That's it for part three of our series of the history of Louisiana hurricanes. In our next episode, part four, we're going to look at the next quarter of a century after the 19 40 storm so that goes up to about 1965 and while these this time period did not have a lot of hurricane striking the impact of two storms in particular Audrey and Betsy in 1965 had huge implications for the state moving forward due to their damage. So if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. If you've got any family stories or anything like that about the storms we talked about in the video, please put them also in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure you click on the thumbs up. And if you want to see more content, please subscribe. And thanks for watching.